Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Thursday of the 11th week after Pentecost, August 20th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 615 in Lutheran service book, When in the Hour of Deepest Need. When in the hour of deepest need, we know not where to look for aid. When days and nights of anxious thought, no help or counsel yet have brought. Then is our comfort this alone, that we may meet before your throne. To you, O faithful God, we cry for rescue in our misery. For you have promised, Lord, to heed your children's cries in time of need. Through him whose name alone is great, our Savior and our Advocate. And so we come, O God, today, and all our woes before you lay. For sorely tried, cast down we stand, perplexed by fears on every hand. Oh, from our sins, Lord, turn your face, absolve us through your boundless grace. Be with us in our anguish. Free us at last from every ill. So we with all our hearts each day to you our glad thanksgiving pay. Then walk obedient to your word. And now and ever praise you, Lord. Today's reading is from the second book of Samuel, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had come to him. 
But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah, and if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Why have you displeased the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, Because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who is born to you shall die. Then Nathan went to his house. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all nights on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David were there to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, The child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house And when asked, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servants said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba and went into her and lay with her, and she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him and sent a message by Nathan the prophet. So he called his name Jedidiah because of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and give thanks to God for his servant, the Holy Prophets and Judge of Israel, Samuel. Samuel was Israel's last judge. His father, Elkanah, had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. Peninnah bore Elkanah many children, but Hannah was barren. The family was pious and went up to the yearly sacrifice in Shiloh. One day, after eating there, Hannah went to the place where God was worshipped. She was deeply distressed and prayed silently to the Lord as she wept. Eli, the priest, after first mistaking her condition, realized she was in great anguish. He assured her that the Lord would hear and answer her prayer. Hannah vowed that if she bore a son, she would lend him to the Lord as a Nazarite all his days. Her prayer was answered, and she gave birth to her little child, whom she named Samuel, because the Lord had heard her prayer. Samuel means the Lord hears. When he was still a lad, newly weaned, she went with Elkanah to the sacrifice and presented the lad to Eli. She explained that the Lord had given this child to her in response to her prayer. Now she was giving back to the Lord. So the little boy stayed and ministered to Eli. The day came when God revealed himself to Samuel, calling to him three times. At first, Eli thought the boy was dreaming. But when he persistently returned, saying, Here I am, for you called me, Eli realized that God was speaking to the lad. He told him how to answer. God called Samuel yet again and pronounced judgment against Eli's house. Samuel was hesitant to tell the old man the words of God, but finally did so. As Samuel grew up, all Israel realized that he was a prophet of the Lord, for the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground. Samuel judged Israel for many years, but sadly his sons, like Eli's before him, did not follow the Lord as their father had. The people demanded that Samuel give them a king. Samuel was displeased and warned the people what a king would do. Still they insisted on having one, so that they could be like the other nations around them. First, 
At God's instruction, he anointed Saul of Benjamin as Israel's king. When Saul proved unfaithful and turned from the Lord, Samuel uh, anointed Jesse's youngest son, David. Samuel died prior to Saul. And Saul, in great dismay at having no guidance from God, sought to call up Samuel's spirit. The apparition told Saul that he would be with him by the next day, together with his sons. Samuel is remembered as a man of prayer whose intercession for the people of God was constant. He is remembered above all for his statement to obey as better than sacrifice. This would be a theme that the later prophets would constantly repeat. We pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, you gave Samuel courage to call Israel to repentance and to renew their dedication to the Lord. Keep us and all your people in the grace of repentance that by the blood of Jesus, the son of David, we may continually receive and rejoice in the forgiveness of all our sins through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.